I've uh, been considering uh, starting my own podcast. You ever heard of them? They're pretty popular these days. Just got this microphone from my sister for my birthday. Oh, you didn't know it was my birthday? Hmm. It's not an enormous deal. I'll just never forgive you. And I'm violently offended. I can finally uh, take up that ass, uh, ass mirror. Um, that ass mirror career I always wanted to take up. Now, I am thinking about starting to do a, a podcast. I have to just figure out and Google how to do that. Can't be that hard, right? But I get very frustrated with technology. To get to where I am right now, um, it was a pain in the bitch. A lot of chords, a lot of unseen chords going on. A lot of cheap things that I bought at like Five Below and whatnot. Not the microphone. The microphone's nice. Works well. I filmed entire videos before using a microphone, only to go back and say, "Well, yeah, well, fuck me, right? You know, it didn't work." Um, if you've made it this far, the twelve people watching this. If you can, if you enjoy my videos, uh, the link's in the bio for all that Goon DC merchandise. Like right here, I got the that Goon tank on. And the new hat, the new logo, so, uh, you know. If you want to, of course, just get on over there. Give me your money. Please. <laughs> oh, nice guy. What I'm here to talk about today is women. Oh, Jesus. You better not start. I swear to God. And men. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I can't hear it. I wish I could. Just take one. Women and men. Men and women. Women. Can't live with them. Can't live without them. I'm a strong believer that a strong man needs a good woman. Especially when you're somebody like me who, you know, a couple screws loose. You need a good woman to keep you in check. Rob him. Love her to death. And I mean that honestly. Well, you're just saying that because, you know, she's going to watch this. Well, that's partially true. <sighs> just kidding. No, I love her. Things are going great. Our one year is on 26. I know you probably don't care. <laughs> but I need that to keep myself level-headed. All of my cons, she makes up with her pros. Which is like 90... Looking at it vice versa, I'm not doing the same thing on the other end. So, you know, 90... We function as a team, and that team, as far as... Uh, Good personality traits go. I, you know, I'm really slack on the good ones. I got a lot of bad ones. I really do. That's fine. Some people are like, eh, women can't live with them. Or, yeah, can't live. I, I say can't live without them. They say can't live with them. Well, that, you do as you please. That's fine. That's fine. Women say, I don't need no man. <clears throat> All right. I hope you came to that. Yeah, that's fine. That is just fine. Women are very complex creatures. Men are very simple creatures. Let me explain. Hold on. Don't get upset. Don't get hairy. Thank, Thank you. What I mean by that is... Men will get rationally upset about simple things. Women will get irrationally upset about very complex things. Hmm? Take a second to digest that if you need to. I'll give you some time. For example, if a man has a collection of G.I. Joes, which is not weird, 
It's not weird at all. It's just not weird. It's not weird. He's a collection of G.I. Joes. You know, say he has him out looking at him. You know, looking at his favorite one. He doesn't play with him like he used to when he was a child. But hey, you know what? G.I. Joe's always cool. But he's looking at it and he's looking at his favorite G.I. Joe. And then the next time, two or three days later, he goes and looks at it again. His favorite G.I. Joe, the hand's broken off. That's a simple thing. Again, to probably 95% of the 10 people watching this, it's stupid, too. I disagree very strongly, but it's stupid. It's simple and stupid. But it's rational. His hand was on the last time I used it. Now it's gone. Where the hell did it go? I didn't break it. Where'd it go? There's no... That, yeah, it's like, damn, that sucks. It's my favorite one. The hand's broken off. I wasn't roughhousing with it. Simple, stupid, but rational. You can say, okay, well, you know, does he like the thing? Okay, well, you know, he's upset because the hand broke off? Okay. You don't say anything about it. You're just like, damn. The hell did that plastic hand go? My favorite G.I. Joe is the one with the orange mustache. There, I said it. Just an example. Women... The opposite. It's irrationally upset about complex things. So say, I'll give out a scenario. Say you've been married for five years. You have two children. Ron and George. But he goes by G-Money to his friends. You have two dogs. One big one and one small one. Let's say a German Shepherd. In New Yorkie, but they get along. It was iffy at first. You were kind of scared. Well, you know, German Shepherd's younger. You had the Yorkie for longer. Well, it, 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 things have gone well. And you're married. And you, you know, just randomly somebody just gave you a million dollars. Like, hey, you know what? Here you go. Here's a million dollars. Take it. Wow, awesome. And you also, by that person who gave you a million dollars, gave you a a free paid vacation to your dream vacation spot. Bonus. Things are going well. You're happy. The kids are happy. The dogs are happy. They even give you access to an RV to drive down to that vacation spot because it's still within the United States. You're a simpleton. That'd be me. But things are going well. It's all packed up. The woman being a complex creature with all of these very good things going on around and go. Hmm. <laughs> um and a man being simple, thinking simple minded, but rationally. Things are going very, very well right now. I can say that with absolute certainty. Because they really are. I mean, things are going very, very well. But she's making noises that indicate they are not. What the hell's going on here? Do I ignore it? Or do I ask? Why am I thinking of this right now? Honey, is everything okay? Oh, um... Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's fine. It's not a huge deal. Hmm. You seem like there's something going on that is a big... It's not a big deal or anything, okay? Look, I, I, I don't want to like ruin the day. I, I don't want to ruin it. Okay? I mean... Okay. Oh, really? You never want to hear how I... I uh, now, uh, what's wrong? Just tell me what's wrong. My hand, you know, the hand of my favorite G.I. Joe broke off the other day. You said it was stupid. What's wrong? Well, it, it's, 
Look, it's not a big deal. It's really not. I mean, it's, okay. Okay, what's going on? It's just that, like, I don't know. Remember, like, when you told me that story? Like, look, I'm not trying to ruin the mood here, but, like, it's not me, you know. Remember, when, like, when you told me that story when you were 12 years old, you had your first wet dream? Um, yeah, yeah. Well, you told me that during, while you were sleeping, you were dreaming about Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> yeah, when I was young, I had a huge crush on J-Lo. Well, <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> Basically, it's not, it's like not me. Like, what? Like, it's not me. Fuck you. Like, it's not me. Like, literally not me. You literally cheated on me. I was 12. I did not know you. <laughs> Again, it's like not a big deal at all. It's really not. I didn't, I didn't know you back then. I didn't have control of my subconscious, you know, subconscious sexual desires. I'm sorry. It's fine. Like, whatever. I like, don't like feeling going anywhere. Exaggerated? Yeah. Yeah. But, far off. You answer. Now, I'm not a one-sided person. You're probably going, oh, he's a pig. Like, you know, I'm like, mm, that was rude. Hey, my God, he's a pig. You know, how many men I have met in my day that have been irrational in their thinking, and they are the ones who cause, that sounds like Professor, uh, Professor McGonagall from Hogwarts. Very much a part of the Hogwarts legacy. All right, so I went one-sided. Riff on the girls. Sorry, you're still here kind of true the scenario is it going to be over you know a wet dream that the guy had when he was 12 for a celebrity eh, maybe you never really know that's why it's a complex but then if the man tries to say oh the hand broke off of my G.I. Joe shut the fuck up who gives a fuck buy a new one doesn't work like that really doesn't So I have to give it to the two-sided, too. At work, you hear about a lot of the same stuff. The weather. Big one. Oh, yeah, big one. The weather. What are you doing for the weekend? And the women in your life. Me, I can honest to God say I don't complain about my girlfriend because there's nothing to complain about. God only knows what she says about me when she's at work. Um, but a lot of guys in construction where I work, you know, want to talk about their wives, stuff that they're not necessarily happy about. And sidetrack, I had the most construction generic conversation a couple weeks back. I said, you know, how's it going, man? Living the dream. I said, well, at least it's almost the weekend. Uh huh. Amen, brother. Weather's good too. Yeah. But you hear a lot of guys complain about their wives or significant other. And in certain very, you know, there's been past scenarios. To where it's like they're chirping and chirping and chirping. It's somebody that it's like, well, I know you. I work with you all day and you're very annoying. You're very arrogant. You're very irritating. So I, I, I'm going to make a calculated guess here. You know, and not only like just regarding your work ethic, but your overall personality. You're complaining about your wife. Bitching at you. complaining. I'm going to make a calculated guess that I'm, I'm on your wife's side here. You know, you really suck as a human being. I can't hardly stand you, and we're, we're at work. I couldn't imagine being with you all damn day. I get breaks from you throughout the day. He's got to deal with you all, all fucking day, all night. Damn. I wouldn't want to go on vacation with you. You know, if it was vice versa. Nice guy, level-headed, rational, hardworking, 
He's complaining, okay, you know, it's a new ball game. You know. I turned 25 on Monday. <laughs> Being mid-20s is nice. It's nice. Mid-20s, early 30s. Kind of when I started realizing that oh, I'm getting older. Getting older than what I was. When I was 17 years old and I was drinking, and I don't condone underage drinking, I really don't. Don't do it. You'd be hungover AF. Wake up the next morning, go to the gym, and do power cleans if you wanted to. You can't be hungover. You can't show that you're hungover because you weren't supposed to be drinking in the first place. Right? Now, oh my God. Like, good God. I went to my, you know, cousin Kelly and her husband Ryan's wedding um, the other week. I was hungover for two days. It was on a Friday evening. I was hungover Saturday and Sunday. I did nothing. It's like, oh, you know, it's really nice outside when I go outside to get my dip. You see, like, your neighbor mowing his lawn. Get a bunch of shit done. You're just like, <laughs> such a joke. Like, fuck, man. It stinks. It really stinks. The first time I knew I was getting older and turning into, you know, that transition into a dad, an old, you know, not an old guy, but like a dad, like an adult, I suppose, was when I got excited about a vacuum commercial. Because back when you were like 18... 19, 2021, ways back. You were going to war, depending on what what time period it was. But like by the time you were 24 years old, you had a crisp two-acre property, nice house, two cars, three kids, wife, two dogs. And you worked, you know, an honest day's work down at the milk factory. Now it's like, what the hell? Can't afford shit. Everything is fucking expensive. It sucks. And when I was your age, well, guess what, Grandpa? It's not that cheap to live any longer. It's a different United States. I'm trying my hardest. My grandpa never said that, but it's kind of, you know. That's how, it's really how it is. Shit is expensive, and it's expensive to live nowadays. Having kids is like, oh, you know, I said, like, I'm 25 years old. Again, back then you'd have children, you know, meet, I don't know how early you want to go. You know, I'm thinking like the 1400s, you're probably pumping out kids when you're 16, probably earlier than that. They'd be like, what, what took you so long? Now it's like another friend of mine, same age. Yeah. You know, um. My girlfriend's pregnant. You're like, oh. Did you mean to do that? You, you didn't mean that, did you? You wanted kids? Oh, okay. You did? Oh, my God. God bless you. Good, good luck. And he's like, oh, my God. That's so amazing. That's amazing. Good for you. Yeah, it's going to be my third. It's going to be my third. No problem. We're very excited. I already got the crib built. I was like, oh, shit, that really sucks. I'm sorry. I, I, I don't mean to be rude, but you, do you, was it purpose or? Oh, no. Oh, nice. It's like the job. You got to work to earn a living, by the way. You shouldn't just uh, be collecting something from somebody else. Unless there's a good reason to it. Just my opinion. Can't take it away. But anyway, I started feeling old. Yeah, I started getting excited about shit like vacuum cleaners. And all that good stuff. I enjoy commercials now. 
There's certain sayings that my dad used to say that I'd be like, Dad, I'm like, Ugh, yeah, yeah, ugh, okay, yeah, obviously. He'd be like, you can't stop the flow of water, you can only redirect it. I could not tell you how many fucking times I have said that. The fastest distance between two points is a straight line. Right. Couldn't tell you how many times I have said that. Getting old, starting to feel aches and pains, starting to grow hair. The mid mid twenties to early thirties. Start looking back, and your parents like, eh, man, I don't I don't blame you for any of that shit that I did because that would be so goddamn annoying. I did the same thing. I really would. And like you know, I have the unbearable urge sometimes when I go to like a convenience store. There's like something like burning in my skull. Like I have to tell him, 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 I have to tell him. Well, you know, you didn't happen to see that down the street they got the billboard for the brisket. I'm not seeing it here, you know. Cashier does not fucking control the brisket supply. Where is it? Or, uh, See that truck out there? I don't have a truck. I have a 2016 Ford Focus. See that Ford Focus out there with a the lumber strap on the back? That's uh, that's me. You want to know what I'm building? The 17-year-old behind the counter at Wawa. Who the fuck? I will say this, though. Older generations make fun of younger generations. Hey, you're all greedy. You're all, you know, complaining. You're all blah, blah, blah. Hat in hand all the time. You're all disrespectful. You're complaining right now. Compare it at a restaurant. I worked in the restaurant industry. So you know the struggles and pains of it. When I go to a restaurant and I'm eating... As I'm done with my plates and my utensils and my trash, I consolidate it into such a way that you can easily pick it up from the end of the table and bring it back. Because nothing went worse as when you were, you know. Excuse me. Excuse me. Please give me that phone piece, baby. Please. My first job I loved it was the Big Fork restaurant with all my friends. My friend Pat got me the job. His father was a head chef. Second cousin, Bill, was a head waiter and Brian worked there too. It was a great job. It was a nice restaurant. It was a BYOB, you know, amazing entrees. Part of the thing we had to do was like, a oh, fresh ground pepper. Oh, yes, please. I was like, good fucking God when they said yes. That was the worst. So, yes, okay. I want to see my family again someday. Nothing's coming out. I don't see anything coming out. It's coming out! Come on, <laughs> Yeah, I put the shit at the end of the table because it makes it easy to grab it. I think older generations, it's like, well, that's not like a necessary thing working in a restaurant. You know? I'm going to leave all oh, my scattered shit all over the fucking table because that's not my job. And that's not everyone. That's not all older generation people. But you're... They're also like, well, you know, I'm giving her, I'm giving her 15% because I asked for George Washington to shape ice cubes, so I didn't get them. Who's that falling here? Versus like somebody who worked in the restaurant industry and probably still has some sort of job that doesn't pay as well as Sharon. 
and gives him a 35% tip, 40% tip. Doesn't even think about a percentage. Just grabs out a nice wad of cash. Something to think about. So, if you think I should do a podcast, let me know. And uh, if you like my videos and want to support and help a brother out, order some merch, let me know what you think. Thank. Thank you for being my friend.